Let's jump into who's eating good. Of course, served by Applebee's. These are players that are coming off a pretty big week, yes, and we're going to ask the simple question, is this sustainable for them going forward? Lawrence, we are starting with Deontay Foreman, who was a monster, playing with Tyson Bajant for the Bears. We hadn't seen much of Foreman this year. He dominates against the Raiders. He comes in for Barry as RB34 this week. Do you think Foreman can keep up? Not an RB1 in all the fantasy performance. That's not fair, but can he be a usable player now in fantasy lineups? If, if you could get him, if he could provide flex value for you, that's good. Uh, the biggest question here will be, Ro will Roshan Johnson come back into the lineup this week? He'll get touches. That's that's evident. He was doing. He's the reason Deontay Foreman was a healthy scratch the first few weeks. Although Roshan Johnson appeared in five games and never topped 55 scrimmage yards, he's still going to be in there, and it'll probably be a 50-50 split. But Roshan Johnson has not completely cleared the concussion protocol yet, so. Uh, Deontay Foreman would be in line for that same type of workload if Roshan Johnson misses again. And he, quite frankly, could put up a similar stat line against the Chargers defense, although it'll be a little tougher when you have the Chargers who have a much better offense than the Raiders. For as bad as the Chargers defense have been in the secondary, they've been good against the run. They're sixth against the run over the last month as well. And so it's twofold, right? Number one is the question is obviously does Roshan Johnson play? But the other thing is, is like, are the Bears competitive in this game? Because if they're down, Deontay Foreman has played on only 42% of their passing downs when he was active. And again, the Bears currently an eight and a half point underdog to LA. So, yeah. you know, do they use Roshan Johnson or Travis Homer or, you know, some of these other guys um, on third down instead of Roshan, instead of Deontay Foreman? We saw him catch the pass for the touchdown as well. You know, the that, that I, I think he's potentially He's a touchdown dependent flex is basically what he is. He's going to need to score. Uh, it was obviously a great game last week as well, but in a game in which they're, you know, over a touchdown underdog where we expect Roshan Johnson to be back. And this is the Sunday night game as well. So hopefully we'll have information before before Sunday night, but just be aware that it is the it is the you know, it's our game on NBC and Peacock. It's the Sunday night game. I'm a company man. Uh, you know, the expectation here is whether it's Roshan Johnson or somebody else. I mean, look. Last last week he he's he's had only uh, with Johnson and Herbert out he's had only 48 percent of snaps and 42 percent of the team rushes. Again, like they haven't given him a full time role. You haven't noticed because he's been scoring touchdowns. But again, touchdown dependent flex. I think the key thing as well is what you notice about the or what you noted about the Chargers run defense, which is that for years and years the Chargers had a bad run defense. They had they just didn't have the beef on the interior defensive line. This year they're actually really good, and Tony Pollard had no room to run against them on the Monday night game. The Chiefs, I mean, they have Patrick Mahomes, so it's okay to abandon the run, but they couldn't get anything going on the ground either. So I would suspect that, particularly going up against Tyson Bajan, a rookie quarterback, that they will stack the box. And in addition to the usage concerns, if Roshan plays, just don't think they're going to be able to run the ball against this Chargers run day. And just to further piggyback off that, you mentioned Pollard and Pacheco having a tough day against the Chargers uh, run defense a week before that. Josh Jacobs, the yep. same deal. So the past three or four weeks, no running back has been able to average more than three and a half yards of carry. So it's only going to come for Deontay Foreman. Like I said, if Roshan, if Roshan Johnson is out again and he gets that volume. If you're Brandon Staley, you're just like, we'll take our chances with Tyson Bajan. Yep. We're, yeah, you know, right. you're not running on us. Exactly. Yeah, short passing game for them mm -hmm. in, in uh, week seven. We showed the running back rankings um, from post week seven. Foreman was finished as RB one. RB three was Jameer Gibbs. Jay, this is the Jameer Gibbs we've week we've all been waiting for. Of course, it kind of coincided with the fact that David Montgomery is out, which upped his usage. But Gibbs' work in the pass game is what stood out, and he's got a great matchup against the Raiders this week. Yeah, he does. And look, it's it's difficult to read too much into that game because by the time Detroit ran their seventh offensive play, they were down twenty one nothing which is just completely insane. So I don't think that usage necessarily you can read uh, as much as you'd like into it. But at the same time, we've seen that when David Montgomery is out, uh, Jameer Gibbs got a ton of work against Atlanta. He was the guy against Baltimore. So I think that Jameer Gibbs is, you know, an RB2 when David Montgomery is out, who has upside to be an RB1 because of the work that he gets in the receiving game after. That's where I have my as an RB1. He's my running back five. And just a big hint, when my love list comes out tomorrow, he's going to be on it. To your point about work when Montgomery's out, he's got 38 touches in the two games that David Montgomery has missed. 83% of the running back touches last week, a 20% target share as well. 
Raiders allow the fifth most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs as well. So, you know, in a game that's in Detroit at home against the Raiders and we know Dave Montgomery, remember the Lions have a bye after this week. So it just feels like they're probably going to let Dave Montgomery rest one more time. Uh, it's also the Monday night game, by the way. So you're probably not going to know. Hopefully we know about Montgomery, but my guess is there's a chance we may not. Anyway, I think Gibbs has a monster game this week uh, against the Raiders at home. Yeah, and you see night. a lot of those runs you just saw on the screen there, especially the touchdown. The game was already out of hand, and you might say, oh, that's garbage time. But those type of plays, those are the ones that Jameer Gibbs can make from any point on the field. And we just talked about Deontay Foreman. He played the Raiders last week. That's who Jameer Gibbs gets uh, this week. So I, sh I, I like him in the top ten as well, uh, Matthew. You know what's interesting? Like, the Jets being on all the primetime games, you sort of get, right? When they set the schedule, they thought Aaron Rodgers was going to be there. He's a big draw. A lot of Raiders. A lot of Raiders. A lot of Raiders. <laughs> like, yes. how did that happen? A lot of Raiders. Right. Yeah, I'll have a word to some people. Could you, <laughs> could you send a note? Yeah, I'm just, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a weird one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just sort of like. I'll talk to Mr. It's, King it's, and his associates. Yeah. Like, even with the Giants. Like, the Giants, again, Giants were a playoff team last year. It's a big market. You sort of get that. Dayball was coach of the year. Everyone expected the Giants to be good as well. So, like, you're not surprised that even though the season hasn't gone the way they did, that the Giants and Jets are on, on primetime, a lot of primetime games. But you're just like, who thought the Raiders were going to be uh, good this it's year? It's like Max Crosby's no longer underrated. Because they're yeah, saying right. the primetime all the time. Oh, everyone knows he's good the now. The Jimmy G yeah. effect, guys. I, I guess. <laughs> I, I, no, it's it's a weird one. I don't think anyone, especially, did anyone think they would be? I mean, I, I saw some places that had the Raiders. For, I would think coming into the season, we thought the Broncos would be better than they would with, with yeah, Sean fourth Payton. Fourth favorite in the division. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what was the thought process there? What's the thought uh, process? Well, you know yeah. what we need to do? Let, let's put the Raiders on national TV like a lot. Yeah, indeed. You know, also, uh, with this game, you miss when you're eviscerating uh, Blake Friedman, Penn State yeah, Blake, Penn State for Blake. his litany of Phillies losses, uh, Philadelphia losses. You didn't note uh, that his best friend, Craig Reynolds, did yes. nothing <laughs> on the weekend. He's with three to 16. True. Yes. One, That's true. One, one, his, 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 Just add it to the list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm pretty sure he lost in our, fan, our fantasy league. Probably. He, he was, I know he was. <laughs> he's he, he he saying he, he won, he, but he, I don't he, believe he, he won. Sure. Yeah. But I do know that he was cut from our guillotine league like two weeks ago <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, it's tough to be Penn State Blake it these is. days. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we should, fly, flies are exceeding expectations. They're going to yeah. get to 80 points instead we of should, 75. We, we should start a GoFundMe for Penn State <laughs> Not Blake. Not a good October. <laughs> GoFundMe. Whatever, whatever Brocktober is, yeah. uh, is the opposite. Philadelphia for, for Union Blake. lost on the weekend as yes. well. Just That's what he said, yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, that's brutal. It's all right, all our all turning down for Penn State Blake. Our last player here, Mac Jones. This he one. Won, he's a cow. Think about this. Like, he went to Penn State. Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. You need, the, the, you need the napkin fort. No, so no, you nothing. Yeah, 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 See, disaster. you mocked me for my napkin fort. They didn't bring me my napkin fort. Um, <laughs> but just, just think about this. Think about what Penn State Blake. Like, Penn oh, State Blake man. went to Penn State, right? Obviously. And that's oh, a really good school. Yeah. No, it's a legitimately good school. It's a good, you know, like, he's a smart guy. Right, and so, and, and right, you'd think, right, well, somehow, whatever, somehow, he's got a degree from Penn State University, right, and so he's worked hard, and and now, somehow, his life has led him to a moment where he had to deliver me popcorn, yeah. like, I mean, he's a college and graduate, and he's not like some young kid, yeah. you saw him on the screen, like, he's clearly, you know, he's got some years on him, so, <laughs> my yeah. point is, is just, I just, I, I need to give Penn State Blake my seat for a segment so the man can at least defend himself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, brought you the, he brought you the popcorn and he didn't even bring the napkin for I know. Say, is, yeah, imagine he, when uh, he's working that hard at Penn State to get his degree <laughs> that a couple years after it, a complaint that would be received to him is, you didn't bring me my napkin, my popcorn <laughs> napkin just, for it. I just feel bad for the guy is all uh, I'm saying. Like, no, this no, life definitely. has not turned out the way he hoped. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Upside. Well. There's upside scope. Yes, yeah. Nowhere to, Jimmy Gibbs. Nowhere to go Did you say up. he got upside? Yeah, yeah Blake said some upside. Yeah, high ceiling. Uh, <laughs> the floor is like B. John Robinson in the second half of the season. It's yeah. coming. Uh, oh, man. Our last player here, Mac Jones. Yeah. Mac Jones with a big week against him. the Buffalo defense. A top 10 quarterback finish for Mac Jones, who comes in still, Barry, for you as QB 28 this week. You're not totally buying in on the revitalized Mac Jones. Not as a fantasy option. Certainly not. I mean, look. 26% of his total fantasy points this year came in week seven. He had a good day at the office. Mm -hmm. Give the man credit. But now he's got to go to Miami, an angry Dolphins team that just got embarrassed on Sunday night football as well. The Dolphins, even in years in which the Patriots were dominant and the Dolphins were sort of middle of the pack, the Dolphins always give New England, uh, you know, always give them fits as well. So 
He comes in at 28 for me. Having said that, I think the, the what's the positive of last week and just the competence of the Patriots offense. You feel better about Ramondre Stevenson. You feel better about Zeke in a deeper league. You feel better about Kendrick Bourne, you know, against a Dolphins defense that allows the fifth man, uh, both fantasy points to quarterbacks, 272 uh, passing yards from last week for Mac Jones. So, like, that's what I think you're, you're banking on. Again, I'm not starting him this week. I need to see it again. He had one good day at the office. But I do think that that gives you confidence about some of the other uh weapons around him yeah well firstly there was a lot of yak in mac jones's game i don't think he has fixed as a player secondary you just look at you know he scored 29 points against the buffalo bills that's great well this bill's defense isn't what it was at the start of the season because there's no trey white there's no daquan jones there's no matt milano right they just don't have corners like it's guys yeah. like dane jackson and bedford and kaya elam like they just this is a team that you can throw on it's a team that made tyrod taylor look pretty good uh, and in a game they really should have lost to the Giants. Yeah. So this Bills defense just isn't, it's not what it was. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I'm not fearing, uh, you know, yeah, they, they, like, it's a good win to beat the Bills, but the Bills barely, you know, got past the uh, Giants. You go back to week two, which is fairly recent. Mac Jones was quarterback 24 that week against the Dolphins, and he had 42 passing attempts while doing so. So knowing that he threw the ball that much and still was not was barely a, a quarterback too, like, no, nah, I got him at quarterback 26 this week. So, yeah, we'll, we, we'll see it. We'll have to see it again. But congrats, though, on the win and, you know, quarterback eight for the week. That's pretty nice for Matt Jones, to good be for honest. You, Mac. Yeah, yeah. Good, for good for you, Mac. Yeah. But up, meanwhile, this the, week we have him at 28. Hold off the quarterback Bell Zappi and – Malik Cunningham. Malik Cunningham. Yeah, he, he, that's what he did. He yeah. held off them they guys. Cut him. Yeah. They cut yeah. Malik cut Cunningham. Him. They're going to try yeah. to get him to the practice squad, but they cut Malik Cunningham. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now okay i'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the nfl on nbc youtube channel you'll get the latest roto world fantasy news headlines all sorts of great shows including my own fantasy football happy hour so go subscribe now again i'm asking respectfully